personally established the scientists, you get something valuable. In the end, they push you aside and they take over. And look at that pine discovery over in the line, down there in the line, Gandhi. The, the poor devils have found that were pushed out of the way because they weren't. They weren't in the. They weren't in the So they pushed out of the way. Yeah, they Bushwalkers, they were They weren't exactly just in the space. They knew it. Yeah, they were Because their credentials were not that. It didn't include the proper degrees or something like that. They were forbidden to go there. What they call it? Pine? What they call that pine here? Well, I'm going to try it from my own life. But uh, I've had this. I was chased off the hippie pyramid once the university people were on it. Um, uh, I've been in Brisbane here. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and then, uh, of course, the van was moving. And, uh, well, one of them took a bulldozer to the uh, East Face and thought he'd, he'd just gouge it out and let me go and find it. Yeah, <laughs> Subterranean chambers containing the lost Atlantean and Lemurian scrolls, told him by Marilyn Pyatt's who said that. Oh, I forgot the atomic reactor. She did a beautiful, she did a beautiful job throughout Australia. She rang up all the newspapers. I don't know what what power she had, but she got big feature articles in every paper. And this came back to about 1982. Claiming she just discovered this pyramid. I had found it in 1975. Uh, the, uh, the press had very short memories, of course. Uh, and um, I'm sure that's a lot of lies. What would be the furthest of building the Well, I think this was just an astronomical structure. It was trapped on the top of yeah, the yeah, other yeah, astronomical yeah. symbols. So it was a triad, triad, triad. And uh, there's some good stuff. Except on the unit, you've got a choice between Jehovah's Witness and the Mormon. I think Jay Owen is the one that really did a little damage, actually. But uh, <coughs> the group there went up with a sledgehammer and smashed the whole stone. And uh, no, that was not forgiven. But the farmer was virtually hammered up in that crime and then ended up being forced to sell out. And uh, it's all subdivided and the things got houses built on them. And the railway line built by the Elfie Peaks and the Serbian Jackmasters. <laughs> and the uh, Merlin and the gold, the gold mine. Just a service where you get gold there, they need a single one. Huh? Gold. You mind your little line that went up through the period. The prime what? That it is the main northern line. Oh, I originally just built that for a service to go on. But uh, it's a well it's a funny town, you can't get anything printed about the period. say that we ask, as he said, these day fly moths, when he bought them 20 years ago, cost 20 cents each. Now you can't get them at all the protected specimens, so hundreds of dollars if he sold them. But she was, this is the Supposedly, Homo erectus fossil which points out to this ridge over here uh, and points out that this is a crushed, what he calls an endo fossil or something like that, uh, an endo cast. Now, endo means inside, so it's supposed to be inside cast of the skull. The inside cast of the skull won't look anything like that. Uh, he says it's a, a rock. I think it looks a bit like a rock, but some volcanic rocks eroded on the beach like this, very similar shape. And that ridge doesn't look anything like a eye socket. Um, he compares this with this, which he says is a cast of a Homo erectus fossil. Now that doesn't even look like a Homo erectus fossil to me. 
uh, and it's certainly not a, it's anyway a cast, so it's a model. And uh, that brow ridge is supposed to resemble the other one, but it doesn't resemble it very closely. Uh, he also has a theory that human beings, um, gee whiz, is a bit of a date with his bits of uh, research. Um, I visited this many years ago. He's been sitting around, he's been here that day for seven years. And uh, space time and stone age tools. He's sort of got this idea that Australian Aboriginals are primitive in some way. And uh, he's all about cons and the glory of the old Lake Kelly tradition, no doubt. Uh, but in a quite distorted way. He's all about calling people, he likes people to call people, but he's not terribly good at Well, he must be reasonably good at doing it. I think his wife's a bit better. Now he says that these are half of axes. They could be stolen from the beach quite easily. Edge axes. That one, some of them probably are. Uh, Aboriginal tools, but certainly that's not a Phoenician Bronze Age script. Somebody's just taken some chalk and drawn the lines on the rock, maybe cut little bits in. And as for uh, Rex, with his absolute confidence in his own assessment, uh, as for his ability to read Phoenician, I'd have to take it with a pinch of salt to say the least. It's a, my assessment, a verdict would have to be hoax and not a Mysterious Australian the day after the book. <laughs> and, uh, we had an American there talking about, uh, uh, about the uh, Eastline statues and all that, but trying to uh, use the uh, UFO angle and uh, I don't know how you could link it with the statues. But, uh, there was another fellow there who was from Eastline and he had a photographic exhibition of Eastline statues and I got in touch with him and he sent me some photos the mail the other day. And he's found bird man, well, bird man carvings all evening. Found, he's found a few carvings myself there of bird man. He was like a little image I found in New Zealand, which I haven't put on the show here yet. And um, it's only been fit in hand. You know, the, uh, the pictures of it. I showed a couple of slides at the lecture front and back, and uh, then uh, I got through. I got through to the Blue Mountains UFO. Uh, section you mentioned the Aboriginal traditions of Biram, the bird man, and a few others. I said these bird men are in myths and legends from Mesopotamia right through to Peru, but uh, it could be an independent invention in different areas. 
anybody would probably come up with a bird man or bird woman, but then again, um, there's this cultural diffusion theory, of course, which might explain that uh, it survived in various forms in the different lands that some of these ancient seafarers have visited. Maybe Atlantis, engineering. Then you've got the other thing too, you've got the... Got the but you, you do have these bird <laughs> men. Men was kind of tacky then. You yeah. do have the bird men, like in Australia, uh, folklore, for example, come down uh, and beings come out of the bird. You know, well, that's something else. Yeah, and, of course, ah, and then, of course, you're. you're, you're Fly machine, the bird men come with the thing, you remember? Yeah. 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 yeah, they all make these ridiculous wings and stuff and they go off this ramp and they go crashing into the yard. Ah, yes, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen that actually, I've seen that on video, it's pretty bizarre. Mm. This is a... Um, yeah. Well, interesting. various parts of the world, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, that should do the, do the, the origin of life, the beginnings of life, it says the origin of life is not yet fully understood. But geological evidence is in complete agreement with modern views that life originated on Earth through natural means. It is probable that at some time, in the Arceus or the Earth, certain chemical compound dissolution activated by energy from the sun produced the first living matter, which was capable of reproduction. And he said that there was only eight people uh, to build this ark, out of gopher wood, whatever that is, he said. <laughs> and uh, it must have been the most gigantic, uh, most monumental shipbuilding uh, operation in the history of mankind. Because no, would have had to have had... Have you seen the thing about Mount Ararat? Oh yeah, but listen, this is funny. He said, they wouldn't need it. He said, if you have two of every kind of animal, male and female joint sperm whale, yeah. they wouldn't want little tubs. You'd yeah. have to build gigantic big swimming for them. And you'd have yeah. to supply them with plants. Yeah, many, many people. Like there's all the food and the different food plants for a million or so species of insects. What about all the spiders? You'd have to feed oh. them, wouldn't you? And what about the Tyrannosaurus rex? How did Noah get a male and female yeah, Tyrannosaurus to come yeah. and walk into the ark? Into two little do, do you mean do you mean do you mean do you meet many people who take that seriously? Well, of course, because you've got the religious fanatics, they call them fundamental yes, Christians, idiots. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I do, I do meet them myself, and I, mean, I, I see that they're sharing a shared delusion of fairly bizarre nature. You know, people who think that the Earth is flat, even people who think that the whole world in ancient times thought the Earth was flat, nobody did. It was only the Europeans of the Dark Ages onwards. Uh, through for maybe 300 years, and they're trying to convince the world that all these tribal cultures thought the earth was flat. Of course, they didn't. Two hands in hand, you know, the crocodile would eat the bird. That's right. He, he points things like this out. He yeah. takes about 80 pages to tear the ark. But what, story of Noah the bits. What, what are your views about Darwin generally, or Darwin's Darwin's work, like as a you? You described yourself as. I mean, he didn't have genetics to call him, so he did. If, if he'd gotten involved with Mendel at the time, if they'd both met one another, sparks would have flown on there. But uh, old no, Dar Darwin's. figure out the reason for all the change, he put it down to natural selection, but we know the, the genetic causes now. But well, the genetic causes don't in any way contradict natural selection. No. Um, uh, I mean, I, I see that Darwin. Uh, well, what do you think of his work and his life as it was in terms of his quality as a scientist well, and his I observations? Well, he was a genius. The 19th century produced so many of those people. Well, I, I don't see that geniuses, I don't uh, see that there are more geniuses so now than, like, when you say he was a genius. I, I have no doubt well, that Darwin I think was a think genius. The last century we had, uh, I suppose it was a case of, uh, well, today we've got the mass media and that, and. Uh, We've got a lot of people. Then, but, you know, it was easier for certain individuals to become better known in parts of the world, whether it was in opera or collecting butterflies or whatever. Uh, and uh, today, there's there's that many experts. Uh, we don't. We seem to have probably there's more brilliant people today. But uh, for their time, they were people who were able to look ahead and sometimes make inspired guesses. Without the technology, we've got to write some. Yeah, I, I see things in something of a, of a reverse, I suppose, that I see that there are far more stupid and gullible people now than there were in, in the time of Darwin. 
And certainly there were a lot more honest scientists in the time of Darwin, including Darwin, than there are now. Uh, there are many dishonest people making very dishonest claims about um, their, their work and their discoveries. And, well, including anybody who I mean, falsifies really, stuff. I mean, you've got fame and the palm of hand, you've got all that money, hmm. you've just got to go one bit further, one bit further. Yeah, well, I think that anybody who sets out to try and fool other people, you know, with, yeah. You know, like Christmas Gush, you know, rip people off and uh, take millions out of the public and sometimes like, they're lucky they can skip the country. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, it's always somebody else that suffers. Well, yeah. well I think whenever you... But what, what, what do you think? What, what do you think should be done uh, about people who do deliberately misinform? I don't know, but he did a lot, a lot of good for medical science, I suppose. And, uh, but, um, I think he's actually doing a uh, behind the scenes job there. He's, he's still working for his organisation behind the scenes, but he can't, he can't clear that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that one necessarily. I think my, my, my objective would be to try and keep the current world honest rather than going, going back and trying to look at all the things that happened in the past, but I think oh, certainly... God, it's gone. Yeah, and but I mean, rectifying, I suppose, means trying to. We all have to make judgments about uh, the science and the quality of the science of the past, uh, but also the quality what of the science done, of the present. It's a bit like anything. What is done at the time mm. is usually done in, in, in good faith, but in retrospect, we can see holes in things and see, well, no, you should have done it that way. Yeah. Well, I, I've been, uh, you might be interested as a, as a nurse in, in the work that in the main area that I've been researching has actually been eugenics and selective culling on racial grounds and also prejudices involved in that and that rich people, social Darwinism, which is part of the reason I asked uh, uh, Rex about his ideas about Darwin. I'm a huge admirer of Darwin for his science and the fact that he was a rigorously honest scientist, uh, but he was of course prone to per particular prejudices of Victorian men of the time as you'd expect in a certain degree, but he was a very humble man and he was also very honest in terms of his method method uh, methodology. The problem is that as soon as he did his work, people came in with ideas of social Darwinism, which was an idea that rich people are rich because they're superior and poor people are poor because they're inferior. From then on, Hitler subsequently took it, a whole lot of people. And this is what I found is resurging in Australia. So some of the creationists that Rex is attacking, which I'd attack very strongly myself, are based around a defense of very essentially culturally biased and racist views about other cultures, which is being directed against Australian people uh, by America number one and England number two. So we're talking about Australia has always been a social experiment. Yes. You know, it's been an experiment. So I can yeah. sort of then ask you, then, what do you think of what the Chinese have done in Tibet? I think what the Chinese, I think the, every government that I have identified so far is guilty of heinous crimes against humanity. And that includes Japanese, Chinese, Indian, uh, particularly America, England, France, Germany. Uh, Australia has been the testing ground for all of it, you know. Yes. It all comes back to, for, even in Tibet, the Chinese have been doing what they think is right at the time. But what the Chinese people themselves have recognized is wrong. The, the Chinese government, as usual, is run by a bunch of corrupt old men. Um, and these men have been repressing people for generations, and they're still doing it now. And they're trying to con the young people and trying to kill them in one way or the other. And the fact is the young people, as you probably realize when you start talking to some of the young people who are growing up nowadays, they're sharp. They really, they're not going to buy into the crap that, the, that their fathers have told them. And uh, I didn't buy into the crap that my father told me after a few years, but it took me quite a few years to wake up to it. Now I'm certainly determined to increase the respect that people have outside Australia for the brains and minds of young Australian people. Um, and I think that's really important that, 
uh, I think that there's a lot of wisdom um, in elderly and older people. But if they start looking down on the intellect of young people, which is what's happening now, they're calling them attention deficit disorder and putting them onto amphetamines, calling the old people demented if they speak up against whoever, their families or whatever it is, and they end up in nursing homes on drugs. All those drugs are produced in foreign countries, in Australia, polluting this country. And who the hell is defending it? Nobody's defending it. Everybody's just instituting these American policies in business schools, archaeology, everywhere else. But I don't think the answer is to try and outcon them. It's just telling them the truth of what's going down. You can't outcon the corrupt establishment because eventually uh, people, it comes back on you and people who are genuinely out there trying to discover stuff and shit. There's a lot to discover in Australia. Um, but I think, I'd, I'd have to say, I mean, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, you should know what I'm talking about, that there's, Australia has been, history has been rewritten by corrupt English people a lot and corrupt establishments, but everyone who knows that there's more can work together without faking anything, without doing any piltdowns or anything like that. We don't need to con them, we can but beat them. Yeah. in the past, the, the establishment has not necessarily been... They didn't recognize They haben't been knowing yeah. Ah, knowingly yeah. corrupt. 99 years. Yeah. In our wisdom, can look back and say, oh, you know, they didn't sure. recognize Sure, I think 99% of the people who are working and doing corrupt things don't know that they're just working for a corrupt system. Yes. Um, but there are always a few people at the top uh, who probably do know um, about what they're doing. There are thousands of millions of dollars spent on arms and psychological, technological warfare. That psychological warfare does impact on the stuff you're directly doing here. That psychological warfare is tied in with changing people's belief systems, mass indoctrination and manipulation into beliefs about UFOs and, and Yowies and whatever. And then at the, that would be fine if they didn't have a parallel movement by the same companies. Uh, you're talking about people like uh, um, Harper Collins and Rupert Murdoch's establishment but pushing on one side all these trippy new age things which sure kids are very interested in and quite gullible about at the same time they're pushing the view that if they believe those things they've got chronic schizophrenia so and you know what the treatment of schizophrenia is it's a bloody horrid thing and uh, we're talking about lots of drugs and injections and shock treatment in this country but that's not the way they do psychiatry everywhere else that's the institutionalized torture system of Victorian academics against the convicts that they had here. And I know because I went through, it's part of the reason that I'm, I am very outspoken in my investigation as well as my in medicine, is because I was committed for four months and injected with all these drugs when I spoke out against the system. So I think that the system... Well, how, what, what would happen to the mind of a person who basic people who only want for good for their people. Um, I guess I'm sort of coming well, right round to Tibet. Mm. People who have been imprisoned for and, and tortured, literally, well, supposedly, horrifically, for years, something like about yeah. 20, 30 years, yeah. then they're just let out of prison. Mm. How? Well, I can tell you that, re believe it or not, the same thing is happening in Australia. There are people who are kept 20, 30 years, 40 years, some die in the prisons or psychiatric system. Some uh, now never heard of. None of them need to be in there. And that's torture. It's psychological and physical torture. Um, it's electric shocks. It's chopping up bits of brain. All this stuff is going on right here. Nobody knows about it. The human rights abuses in China, uh, certainly I hear about them and I don't doubt them for a moment, having known about the Cold War. But the Cold War wasn't just the communists doing atrocities, the capitalists were doing atrocities oh, as yeah, well. Yeah. And I'm saying that the manipulation, mass manipulation and chemical warfare uh, is to fight our own, clean up our own act at home. Uh, before given we start spraying. Certainly before we give the, the, knowing the horrific history of the Aboriginal people in Australia at the hands of the Commonwealth. Uh, the Commonwealth are not just killing Aboriginals, they're killing poor people, they're killing young people, they're killing old people, they're killing anyone that is not a worker the way they want you to work, which is just being a slave to the system. So I think that uh, it's quite important that Australia start speaking up for itself and realising that the image of Australians is a bunch of gullible, stupid uh, you know, people on the other yeah, end of the earth. Yeah.
you know, that it's not like that. You know, there are lots of very intelligent thinkers and philosophers here. Uh, but I guess they don't all come up to, to Tamworth for the Country Music Festival, but I'm sure that there'd be, there might be a few. Oh, yeah. Again, they were all chopped down from the rainforest. These are all South American and Asian rainforest butterflies. These ones are all Australian up here. <coughs> These ones are all Australian. These are maybe his own collection or they may be his father's collection. These ones are bird wings. Some of them are from New Guinea. They're protected, all these butterflies. You can't get them nowadays because people were exploiting them and taking them all from the forest. Beautiful butterflies. Those are Raja Brook bird wings from, uh, um, I think, Malaysia. Those big ones up the top, the black and green ones. Now up the top on the left, on the right side. These are all bird wings. That's, uh, that's another bird wing, Queen Victoria bird wing. What about the blue ones? Yeah, the, yeah, the blue ones, these are all New Guinean butterflies. New Guinean bird wings. Some of them, that one's an Australian one, I think. No, Manus Island, Birdman. These are all from the islands north of Australia. And they protected them in New Guinea because they were catching so many of them and wiping them all out. All of these are New Guinean birdwings. There are two from north of Australia. Oh, there's one species from the north of Australia. These butterflies, he told me, were from, well, he wasn't quite sure, he told me, she told me some conflicting stories about where these ones are from, but these actually Japanese ones, I've caught them in Japan myself. She claimed they came from Poland. Somewhere. These butterflies down here, which are Japanese butterflies. Oh, maybe she did. Yeah. Hmm. This is the skull and jaw of a thylacine type animal. To my perhaps not as fully trained. paleontological eye, it looks very much like a dog skull. Uh, this is what he claims is reconstruction of thylacine. This is, I've seen this picture before, the uh, last photographs of a thylacine taken in 1931. Last thylacine shot in the wild. Uh, he claims in his book that thylacines are two meters fully grown, two meters long. As you can see, thylacines aren't anything like two meters long, the size of a medium-sized dog. These are supposedly thylacine footprints. Uh, these look way too big to be thylacine footprints. And, of course, they look like pretty crummy forgeries. These look like genuine fossils as to of what could be Anything? Are you ready to go? I am ready to go. I think we have done our extensive investigation and I'm afraid this is quite succinctly too. Built down all over again with new 